Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Coffee with Carl. I am your host, as always, Carl Zellner, one of the attorneys with Anderson Business Advisors. And today we're going to continue along with our series of me sort of picking random platinum questions and going through and answering them. So today we have a question from a client in California. Um, Once again, we're not going to read the names out. We're just going to go through the question and take you through some of the steps we need to look at. So the question is, for house flipping, can each for LLC that will hold flip be owned by my Wyoming holding LLC, or it shouldn't be because it's active income, not passive? That's the first part of the question. Or should I have one more master flip LLC taxed as a C-corp owned by a Wyoming LLC, so then I have anonymity and maybe avoid California franchise tax? So rarely will we get a question that involves California that does not involve the franchise tax. In this scenario, it makes it tough because the client is a California resident and the way California defines doing business in California for residents is extremely cumbersome because basically by being a resident of California, any entity you own, they now consider to be doing business in California and subject to the franchise tax, okay? There's several different strategies as workarounds for it. Most common recent strategy is using Wyoming statutory trusts as they are not subject to the California franchise tax. Uh, This client has a, I went and, well, of course, had to review the structure to answer the question for them. So I reviewed their structure. So I'm gonna answer it in the way that their structure most easily allows. So for flipping, you shouldn't run your flips through disregarded entities that aren't disregarded to a corporation. The type of income generated by flipping is, can make your uh, entire portfolio, portfolio subject to dealer status, which is a bad deal because ultimately you lose out on things like 1031 exchanges, passive income, things like that. So First part of the question, unfortunately, is a no. I wouldn't run those through Wyoming entities back to yourself as an individual. I would run it ultimately through something with corporate taxation. So it could be disregarded entities holds the flips and those disregarded entities are ultimately owned or disregarded to an entity with corporate taxation. That would be fine. But no, I wouldn't run it through to yourself as an individual. Uh, the second piece, or should I have one more master master flip LLC taxed as a C-Corp owned by a Wyoming LLC? You could have a C-Corp or LLC taxed as a C-Corp owned by a Wyoming LLC. I'm just not really sure what you're, you'd necessarily be getting out of it. Uh, would you have some anonymity? Yes, a little bit, but you'd also be putting California on notice that there's a Wyoming LLC out there that owns a California LLC and that Wyoming LLC would also be subject to the franchise tax. So just keep that in mind. So what is the, what is the best way here? Uh, Best way here is I would use, at least in my opinion, there's so, you know, certainly opinions can differ. Um, I would use an entity in California probably just use an LLC depending on the price of the flip because your franchise tax actually starts at 800. It can be substantially higher than that. Uh, But I would probably just use an LLC in California, consider the $800, the cost of doing business there and build it into my overall pricing model um, and be on my way. So I would, like I said, sort of from a long-term simple ends up being best in this case, I would just eat the 800 bucks unless there, unless it was like a, I don't know, a $6 million flip or something like that. And then you might get a little bit more creative. So that's what I would do there. Um, like I said, opinions can differ. So if you find out that you're this person and somebody answered the question different, don't freak out. It's just, especially in California, there's some differing opinions. And for me, after dealing with well, I don't know, hundreds of California clients over the years, a lot of times just simple and eating, a, you know, eating that 
franchise fee, if it's the 800, isn't that big of a deal. Same thing goes for rental properties, by the way. That is, what is it? let me see here. So if I've got a rental property in California and it's gonna be subject to the $800 a year, that is roughly 60 bucks a month in rent. So one of those things to consider. I know it's I know it's sort of the big bad wolf out there and everybody likes to avoid it because nobody wants to pay any more taxes than they have to in California, which I also think is fair, uh, but also put it into perspective as well, just depending what you're doing, it might be worth it just to keep it simple so you're not banging your head against the wall when you've got, you know, four different layers of entities just to do a simple flip or uh, hold a rental property. So like I said, most common uh, form or best form for long-term stuff in California right now is the Wyoming Statutory Trust. Simple, straightforward, no franchise tax. Flips are a little bit different just because you got to work with, you got to work with your, your lender on who's doing your flip or your hard money lender. So usually it's easier to provide them something they're used to seeing and they may not be used to seeing Wyoming statutory trusts. So just be flexible. Also, like I said, sometimes it just makes sense to eat the 800 bucks and build it into your pricing model and be about your business. So that's it for this episode of Coffee with Carl. Thanks for joining us. As always, like, subscribe, share with a friend, and we will catch you on the next one. So until then, everybody have a great day and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.